Hello guys and gals, it is I, the Monster, and today we are reviewing Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the remake for the Nintendo Switch, a remake of 2004 Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you man, I never thought I'd ever be reviewing this game at all. I, uh, to me this was kind of, uh, I thought I'd see this maybe in another 10 years or so, if you could believe that. But uh, the fact that we got this now is absolutely incredible. So, this game is very nostalgic for me. Uh, I grew up playing the original. This is my original copy from when I was a kid. I remember I kept reading about Paper Mario. I was obsessed. I was so, so excited for this game. And I remember my, my mother picking this up for me. And I was just absolutely entranced by it. And, you know, now here we are, tw like, just about 20 years later, right? Give or take. And this remake comes out. Uh, how does this game, how does this remake fare, right? How is this doing in comparison to the original game? I am very happy to say that this remake is extremely good. It's extremely faithful. And we got a lot to go over. So let's do this. I'll never forget back in 2004 how excited I was to play the original Paper Mario on the GameCube, The Thousand Year Door. I remember reading magazines, I remember just being so obsessed with like the artwork and seeing all the party members and the zones and I was I was just so enamored by it and I remember uh, you know I had to ask my mother if we could go and get this game. She also bought me the first Paper Mario back on the 64. I love the Paper Mario series, at least those first two games. I never really get to talk about them often but they're some of my favorite Nintendo games of all time. Uh, and, you know, for me, I feel like Paper Mario is a series, a franchise, if you will, that really came in and it was another time in Nintendo's history where they were really taking risks and swinging for the fences and they were trying to do new ideas and different things. What I really loved about Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door in general was like how Mario in a sense was the blank slate character. You know, Mario's heroic, he's here to save the day, he's here to save Peach, he's here to stop the bad guys in this game, but at the, the heart of the whole game, it's really the party members and the bad guys and the characters in the, in the towns and cities that really carry the game as a whole. And I think that's what's so remarkable about the Paper Mario series. It's just like the ability to give these random characters so much life and, and, and story and lore, like some random toad that you can meet can have like a job being a sailor or a plumber or something. And it's it's really fun. I have to say that before we get into the nitty gritty of all of this, I really want to talk about the major changes that they made to these games. So uh, Intelligent Systems, the original developer of all the other Paper Mario games, to my knowledge, uh, they remade this new one. and. The original Paper Mario on the GameCube ran at 60 FPS, and in this game, it is it is a remake from from pretty much the, the the ground up, and it's running at 30. Now, I'm going to be completely honest here. I know there's a lot of discourse online about this. However, I personally didn't see that many crazy differences in the gameplay. Uh, I mean, for the most part, the timings and everything still felt the same to me. At the end of the day, it's a single player RPG. So if this is something that bothers you, I mean, I suppose I can understand that. But personally for me, it didn't really bug me that much and I really ended up enjoying this game either way. Uh, and I should I should know because this is a game that I played a lot of and admittedly, uh, I was never able as a child to fully kind of comprehend the game, so I never beat it, but I played through it a lot. So like I still have all of these weird muscle memories and things that I didn't even know about when I played through this uh, new version. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. I also want to talk about um, how the uh, the game itself, they changed uh, menus. There's a lot more menus, but it's a lot more information. And the biggest change of all uh, is pretty much they added the uh, ability to swap party members on the fly, which is incredible because you'd have to go back to like a menu and go through the whole thing of that. And real quick, before I forget, there's also some dialogue changes, but nothing like too crazy to my knowledge again. Uh, but for the most part, the changes that they made to this remake are really great, and I'm very like impressed overall. The game is still beautiful, there's still iconic party members like you know, Goombella and Coops and Vivian and Flurry. 
but Bobbery, Bobbery, uh, Miss Mouse, I mean, the Yoshi, they're, they're all there. The x Knots, the bad guys, Grotus, uh, Crump, you know, Bowser, of course, Cammy Koopa, they're, Peach, they're all there. Well, Ko Peach is not a bad guy, but she's there. You know, and so it's it's still there. Everything is still intact. It's the the graphics or the the paper art is still beautiful. There's still some really interesting design choices that they made that they only further enhance in this remake. Uh, these zones, man, let me tell you, like Rogue Port, still one of the most iconic zones in a Mario game. You know, you you land in this random uh, town that's filled with bandits and kind of thief characters and mobsters, and it really sets the tone for like your adventure. You know, you go everywhere from like um, uh, a very long tree level to like a fighter's wrestling pit in the sky, a train. You, fight, you, you solve a mystery on a train. There's like a, a Nightmare Before Christmas-esque creepy zone. There's so many iconic zones in this game, and they're all here, and they're all intact, and, and everything is still the same. The music is still banging. They actually improved the music soundtrack. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, yeah, everything is still there. It's still, still a beautiful game. And, you know, it pretty much plays like the Mario RPGs. You know, you're you're fighting with your jumps and your hammers, and your party members have their special abilities depending on what they do, and you're timing them just right. And there's obviously there's items and different things too to heal and damage and whatnot, buff your uh, your your party members. So there's a, you know it's all of that kind of stuff. It's very basic. And again, I think the timings are pretty good too. Uh, and you know the story is pretty straightforward. You know Mario has to go and save Peach because Peach finds a treasure map that gets her. In, gets them into this whole convoluted mess and then there's uh, a bad guy that's trying to get these seven stars that are on the treasure map and Mario's got to get them for him and they gotta, they're got they going to try to summon some big angry old demon and then Bowser gets involved because he wants to be involved with the whole plot and it's just really fun. So you have these moments, the big chunks of the story where you're playing as Mario and you're meeting the party members and you're helping out all these different zone characters and whatnot and getting the stars and then you've got these, these Peach mini game zones where you are trapped with the bad guys and you're you're serving this robot tech who's like a weird knockoff of like 2001's A Space Odyssey and he ends up like falling in love with Peach. It was always a very weird storyline and unfortunately one of the negatives is even with the remake being super faithful they did not fix that damn uh, potion mini game. There's a, a potion mini game. We got to mix a potion, and you have like 30 seconds to mix it and cl click a button. And even when I timed it on on just in general out loud, it, 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 I couldn't do it. I had to use my phone timer just to do it. So I was a little bummed that they didn't like go back and at least tweak those kinds of things. And then the Bowser stuff is pretty much old school 2D Mario. You're just going on a rampage, getting bigger and bigger, and beating the crap out of all these enemies and characters that, that Mario has encountered. And it's really funny. It's a very funny game. The writing in this game is still really, really sharp. Uh, I mean, I, again, it's just a time in Nintendo's history where they were really able to just do anything and knock the fences and really make fun of Mario, make fun of every little single thing. It's really cute. It's just got a really charming uh, script, I suppose. And I also have to mention that the badge system is still here. Uh, you unlock different badges and you can equip more badges if you, you spec into it. And you're, you're getting different perks. You can... Uh, do different kinds of jumps and hammer wax and jump on spikes, which is a really good one. Uh, you can see their HP, another good one. There's all good stuff. And they even added a badge to this game that's literally the GameCube music. It's incredible. So you, And it costs no badge points. So you can just put that on after you purchase it in, in the game with the coins. And it's just, you got the OG GameCube music. So it's really a nice little homage. Uh, you know, and I, I think that they really knocked it out of the park. Uh, the only other real issue I have with this remake is, besides the Peach minigame, is that there are definitely still some old pacing issues. Like, when you get to, like, um, Glitzville, it's a lot of, you have to click this giant Game Boy Advance, and I'm not kidding when I say everything's still intact, and you have to do these battles to unlock more progression into the story. I wish that they kind of changed stuff like that. You know, there's certain things, like the second chapter in the game is definitely like a skill check. There's just a couple little things. But listen, you know what? I can't complain. I really can't. This is one of those rare remakes that just does every single dang thing right. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, you have to pick this one up. It, they're not kidding when they say this is one of the best Nintendo games ever made. Like, I truly believe this. So, yeah. And you know, number four earlier in the review, I talked about how I played this game a lot and I couldn't beat it. I admit this. 
You know, I had this real sobering moment when I finally beat this game recently, and it was that this game took me like 20 years to beat or something, and it, it sent a chill down my spine, you know? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, this this might have been the longest game ever I've, I've ever taken to beat, and everything is still intact, everything is still great, everything's still memorable, it plays great, It's there's just something about it. I know we use the term vibes a lot, but like, it really does have a vibe of its own, and there's just so much creativity in this game that I really think it shines. So yeah, I can't recommend this any further. This has now become one of the best games on the Switch. And I would be really remiss if I didn't say this right here, right now. This game right here has really frustrated me because scalpers and people that buy up old games have been skyrocketing this game for the last number of years. And I don't understand why. This game, I've seen this at conventions, I've seen it on price chartings and sites. This was like $120 at one point, okay? This game got a greatest hits re-release, which means it probably did pretty dang well for what it was. So, uh, I'm just putting this out there. I don't know how it happened, but like we gotta stop having things like that happen. It's ridiculous. So the fact that this finally got a true re-release because this never got a re-release anywhere. The original Paper Mario did, but not this one. Uh, it, it, it's just remark. It's just insane to me. I guess it is remarkable. I don't know. So to me, you know, really, we gotta, you know, if we're preserving games, like yeah, go out and check this one out. I really think this one knocks it out of the park. And it really just does everything it's supposed to do correctly, uh, I, I believe at least. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. I uh, I really I really love this game. I think that they uh, they nailed it. And I would really, 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 really. I'm praying to the RPG gods that we get another uh, Paper Mario game like these games, like the original game, because I'm going to be very blunt, I haven't touched this series in like almost 20 years, I, you know, I heard Super Paper Mario is not bad, it's a little slept on, but the other ones, I'm not really vibing with them, so, I'm just putting that out there, I really want another RPG, strong party members, hell, bring some of these party members back, I would, I would shed a little tear if you brought back some of these beloved characters, I wouldn't, I would be down for that. And that's pretty much it. So check it out. Are you interested in this game? Are you excited? What do you want to see remade? Are you playing it? Are you getting nostalgic about this? I don't know. Who are your favorite party members? Because mine were always Coops, Vivian, and Bobbery. I always loved those three a lot. Mrs. Mouse is kind of cool too, but she's super optional and like you don't you don't really need her. So yeah. In any case, guys, check this out. It's it's great. And please like, comment, subscribe, share. I hate to be that guy, but we're very, 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 very close to 600 subs, and I would greatly appreciate it if we could finally get to that. So thanks, guys, and uh, enjoy. Play this game. Check it out. And will I get the shot? Probably not, but that's okay. We're going to try our best. So uh, that's it. Take care, guys. Enjoy. Oh, look, I got it.